And it's because of folks in this room like, like Jim and Steny, who, uh, who just have always been there for all of us. No matter where, no, I really mean it. Been there for all of us. By sticking together, we got a lot done. By sticking together, we're back in the house and we're going to finish the job. Look, let's take a look at what we've done. And some has already been mentioned. You know, we came in, the economy was in, in, in ruins. A new type of relief check may go out to the people. And lawmakers are aiming to address the rising price of gas. One of the new proposals will provide eligible Americans with a monthly stimulus for at least 100 bucks. And now, according to the latest report by AAA, the average price for a gallon of gas fell $3 this week from $3.42 during the previous week. It came as oil prices fell 5 bucks from the last week to $70 per barrel. Gas Buddy even reported that the most common gas price was $3.20 a gallon, a drop of $0.10 cents from last week. A number of factors have coincided to bring gas prices steadily lower since then. And now a year after the crisis, crude oil prices on global markets and the retail price of regular gas are below the pre-crisis levels. But lawmakers still do support a new type of relief payment. It will be a gas rebate check. The three representatives have supported the Gas Rebate Act, and the proposal comes from several representatives like Mike Thompson, John Larson, and Lauren Underwood. The bill includes that Americans will get an energy rebate of 100 a month in any month where the national average gas price exceeds $4 a gallon. Representative Peter DeFazio has proposed the Stop Gas Price Gouging Tax and Rebate Act. The bill would create a windfall profit tax on excessive corporate profits and return the revenue to American consumers in the form of a tax rebate. Under this proposal, companies will pay a one-time 50% windfall profit tax on any adjustable taxable income that exceeds 100% of their adjustable taxable income during 2015 and 2019. So inflation still remains high, yet Americans went on a spending spree last month, eating out of restaurants, shopping for cars. In ordinary times, the additional spending will be welcome news to an economy that's heavily dependent on consumer dollars. But there's a catch. All that spending may put more pressure on inflation, at a time when the Federal Reserve is just raising the rates aggressively to keep prices in check. Even according to economists, a drop in consumer spending would help to cool inflation, but it would also raise concerns about a recession, a recession that nobody wants to talk about. Because in addition, many people socked away extra savings during this time, when spending opportunities were limited and the government was distributing multiple rounds of relief. It's important to remember that millions of households are still struggling. Businesses are not confident that uh, consumer spending habits will continue, and spending grew much faster than income in January. The Fed has been trying to get shoppers to slow down their spending and interest rates in an effort to curb inflation, but it looks like it's not going to happen. He had wanted to make sure that he gives that little bit of breathing room uh, to Americans who really need it. And this was targeted. This was targeted for uh, Americans who are making less than 125000 uh, it, it gives that 10000 uh, debt relief. And if there are, and it has that Pell Grant provision in there, as we've talked about, you heard from uh, Ambassador Susan Rice, and you guys have all read, I'm sure, the fact sheets. And when you look at the Pell Grant provision, and you add that piece to it, uh, that adds another, uh, that could go up to 20000 Right. Federal benefits will be changing. A new bill has just passed in Congress, and this means millions of people will see adjustments made to the monthly benefits, everybody. A bonus check worth $500 will also be automatically, automatically deposited very soon. And major changes are on the way because of a brand new law. These changes will affect prescription affordability for more than 50 million beneficiaries that are on Part D of Medicare. During a speech this month, Joe Biden said the Inflation Reduction Act finally delivers a promise that Washington has made for decades to the American people. We're giving Medicare the power to negotiate for lower prescription prices. Price negotiations are not the only provision in the bill. Targeting Medicare prescription costs, there are new caps on out-of-pocket spending, limits on increases in premiums and prescription prices, and more. Biden signed the act into law in June and August 2022. Certain changes will take effect in 2023, while others start as late as 2026. Senator Kirsten Gillibrand, a Democrat from New York, has said in an official statement, the Inflation Reduction Act targets the most expensive, most used prescriptions that have enjoyed limited competition and maximum profit. Previously, Medicare was prohibited by law from negotiating prices for prescriptions. And now this means if you're prescribed, one prescriptions with negotiated prices, you should see reduced prices starting in 2026. How much you could save depends on which prescriptions you take and the results of negotiations. Starting in 2025, out-of-pocket spending 
for Medicare Part D prescriptions will be capped at $2,000. That cap increases in subsequent years based on Medicare's annual spending for covered prescriptions. For covered prescriptions. If Medicare spends 5% more, for example, the cap for 2026 would be higher, which is $2,100. Previously, there was no out-of-pocket spending cap for Medicare Part D, so after you reach the $2,000 out-of-pocket cap in 2025, you will not owe any more co-pays or co-insurance than for covered prescriptions for the rest of the year. And with the federal government continuing to work on creating new relief programs, state governments are now using tax surpluses and leftover funds from the American Rescue Plan to provide direct financial support to millions of taxpayers. And so that's incredibly targeted, that's really important. Those borrowers who are on Pell Grant, let's think about this, right? Um, some of us in here probably have to have, have, have gotten Pell Grant. I had to get a Pell Grant when I went to college. And those are families that are $60,000 households. And that's nearly $60,000 per, per household. And, it, and you, if you look at it by half, that, uh, that's, that's 30, part of that, that tranche is 30,000 $30, people per household. And so that's incredibly targeted and will go very far and, make, and will be a big deal. Look, we understand, the president understands, and he said this yesterday, it's not going to please everybody. He understands that the policy is not. What he is trying to do is make sure that, again, we're giving families a little breathing room and just to give you a few quotes, because there has been uh, a broad range of groups and advocates from teachers unions to labor groups to racial justice advocates who have applauded uh, the president's announcements. If you think about the United Auto Workers, President Biden once again showed that his administration stands with working families over special interests. That's what we're talking about. Uh, American Federal Federation of State, County and Municipal Employees, this is AFSCME, Today's historic actions puts money back into working people's children. That's the American dream. That's what we strive for. That's what we sacrifice for. And that's what Democrats' radical policies are destroying. Today, the ex-chairman of the Federal Reserve said the U.S. economy is heading towards stagflation for the first time since the 1970s. Remember, in the 1970s, Democrats had control at then late 70s of the White House, of the Senate. Schumer called on the Labor Department to, to, join, to join him in his fight to get Biden to forgive $50,000 in federal student loan debt. During a roundtable with Elizabeth Warren and union leaders, Schumer said there was a false narrative about whose student debt cancellation would benefit. Schumer stated, let's dispel one alpha myth right here. That is not a problem that concerns the wealthy or the Ivy League. It's affecting working class people. Schumer also appeared to be speaking directly to Biden, who has repeatedly framed canceling student debt as a handout to the well-off. Schumer and lawmakers have made it clear that they will continue to push for student debt cancellation. And the Biden administration is grappling with the 